Hello everyone. Uh, so today I'll be continuing the module three. Last class uh, we had uh, stopped at uh, house drainage. We had discussed about different types of uh, water supply that is hot water, cold water supply, uh, different uh, ways of uh, uh, transferring that from one point to other point. Then uh, we had concluded till house drainage. So this is the continuation of the same thing. So in the house drainage, we look at uh, uh, different uh, different equipments used, different fittings used in house draining. There are different fittings which can be used in uh, house drainage. So it can be classified under a uh, few things like sanitary fittings. In sanitary fittings, there are soil fittings. Soil fittings are nothing but water closets. In water closets, we have Indian type water closet, European type, Anglo-Indian type. Mostly what we use is Indian type and European type. So in uh, why these are considered as soil fittings is because the waste which is generated from this is a uh, is a go is considered as soil soil. So it is uh, called as soil fittings. The pipe which we connect these two drain out from a house is also a soil pipe. So mostly the closets are considered as soil fittings. Then we have urinals. Urinals uh, they are also uh, uh, considered to be uh, direct urinals are also considered to be the soil fittings. So uh, we have two types in urinals wall fixed urinals and squatting urinals. Waste water fittings, then we have waste water. The earlier slide which we saw was all completely soil fittings that is water closets and urinals. Here waste water fittings we have bathtub, shower tray, wash, hand wash basin, bidet, sinks that is kitchen sink, sink is usually kitchens we use in kitchen so it is called as kitchen sink drinking water fountains all the water which is generated from this comes under waste water so these fittings are called as waste water fittings then we have associated associated equipments so associated equipments are nothing but flushing systems the different systems or equipments which is used to make work, make other fittings work that is soil pipe, make, other, uh, make soil fittings work, make wastewater fittings work. So flushing systems, so uh, in flushing systems main thing is flushing systems. Flushing systems where do we use? We use it in closet, water closets, urinals, all those places we use flushing systems. So in flushing systems we have different types, chain operated flushing systems, earlier we used to see this play, uh, chain operated flushing systems, cistern that is uh, uh, in the toilets and all in uh, old uh, style we see we pull the chain and the flushing happens. So that is chain operated flushing system, lever or handle operated flushing system, automatic flushing system. So these are the different types of flushing systems, flushing systems. In flushing, we also need valves or cocks. So weight cock, prince cock can be used. In valves, we need to have chain operated flushing system ke liye or lever, lever handle operated flushing system. We need uh, valves. Uh, the, these, the details of these equipments will be explained in the next module in detail. So this is just a brief of what types of equipments are there for house drainage. Right? So flushing systems, we have traps. Traps are again classified based on the functions and the shape and uh, water jets, health faucets, health faucets shower, etc. So let's see uh, traps in detail. So traps are nothing but 
they are defined as uh, fittings at the end of a soil pipe or waste pipes to prevent foul gases coming out of the soil pipe and waste pipe. So, to just to give you an idea of what are traps, I shall show you the picture of it. Yeah, so these are traps, which is so in the bathrooms and all we see this plate with holes or gratings. The whole unit is called as trap. Now these traps are classified into different classifications which we see here. Yeah. So traps are used at the end of the wastewater or waste fittings, wastewater fittings and soil fittings, right. So, this can also be called as depressed or bent sanitary fitting which is always filled with wastewater. So, this is a depressed or bent, you see the bend, so this bend, so uh, depressed or bent sanitary fitting which is always filled with wastewater. You see this line, so this is always filled with wastewater. The whole unit will always be filled with wastewater, ok. Contains water seal measured as the vertical distance between crown and dip. In the traps, any traps, water seal is very important. So, what is that water seal? You see this line, this portion is called water seal from here to here you see the distance so this portion is called water seal so what is the function of this why is this uh, seal required that means whether the uh, fitting is used or not whether flushing happens whether the uh, 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 sanitary fitting is used or not always there should be water in the trap if not, the foul gases may come towards the, uh, towards the building or reverse way. So, this water seal is compulsorily required for any kind of fitting. So, how much is the minimum dip depth we need for water seal? Minimum depth is 25 to 75 mm. Mostly it depends on type of, uh, for wastewater, wastewater fitting we look at 50 mm and uh, for uh, uh, soil uh, for wastewater 50 mm within 50 mm is also ok 25 to 50 mm but uh, for so soil pipes soil fittings we need 50 to 75 mm. So it is better if you have the depth of the water seal more so that the foul gases does not come inside or go, uh, go uh, come inside the building. So, this, uh, this helps in preventing the foul air or gases but allows sewage to pass. When the water seal is there, the gas, foul gas does not come from the public sewer. So, it, uh, it always stops the foul gases. So, that is very important. Traps requirements, how do you find the traps? It should be always easily cleanable, easily fixed free from inside projections, there are not supposed to be any projections inside the trap, Sim simply constructed and smooth surface, it should always have smooth surface. Good traps, while we are selecting good traps, uh, these are the few categories or uh, points which you have to look in for, it should provide enough water seal minimum around 50 mm with larger surface area, interior surface should be smooth and unobstructed and access door should be there to clean the water, clean the water seal and it should be made of non-absorbent material. The material should be such that the water should not be absorbent like for example we use clay pipes also so that water can be absorbed into that. But here we have to choose that trap should be, the material of the trap should be non-absorbent. 
So, these are the different terminologies of traps. So, you have an inlet pipe, whether it can be flow, train, flow trap or uh, different uh, purpose uh, trap which is used for different purposes. Uh, we have this water seal which is compulsorily used and the clean out that means this cap can be opened that cap can be opened and you can flush out the water to clean it and then you close that and then you again fill the water seal. So that is very much required. The trap seal depth is always considered from this line to this line that is this is dip this point is called as dip ok uh, from the bottom of the outlet pipe to the upper surface of the trap dip that length is always called as trap seal that should be 50 mm. While uh, maintaining the water seal, we are supposed to maintain water seal always in the traps. So, all drain pipes connected to traps should be free from uh, any obstruction. Also be carried vertically minimum 1800 mm above the terrace of the roof. So, here, so when we have this building section, The traps usually will be here floor trap and uh, if you have a commode so the pipes are taken from here all the wastewater pipe soil wastewater pipe soil, soil pipes are taken here in the sunken slab right so either it is taken out from the wall or taken out in the duct wherever it is if this is a duct from the uh, from the flushing tank and other waste water soil water whatever water we are taking out from the building this soil pipe and waste water pipe should extend on top before we transfer it down to the sewer line or public line public sewer line the pipes has to be extended if this is the end of the terrace end of the terrace the pipes has to be taken above 1800 minimum 1800 minimum mm minimum and here it has to be covered with a cap so that the foul air gas or air which is passing through these traps escapes easily from the building so that it does not pass back to the building. From here it will escape from the top of the building. So this height has to be there that is a vent. Now uh, that has to be uh, that venting has to be done for all the pipes whether it is wastewater pipes or soil pipes. Now here this is one more criteria which is definitely required for uh, water seal. So if for some reason the sanitary fittings and wash bathing areas are not used for longer period especially in hot season then so for some reason if the building is not used or if the fittings are not used for some reason especially in the hot season during summers it is as, uh, supposed to apply glycerin or machine oil over the water seal you can spray it there are different ways of applying that so supposed to apply glycerin and machine oil over the water seal so to prevent direct contact of air with water thereby preventing evaporation of water so if you decide that you are not there for in that building or for some reason that building is not used if uh, glycerin machine can, oil can be applied for that water seal then the evaporation of water does not happen in the water seal and there is no foul smell any time in the building. Okay. 
Then the traps are classified in different ways based on the shapes, based on the functions. So traps classified based on the shape you have. We have pre-trap, Q-trap, S-trap, right? These are the different types of uh, traps which where we have shown the images. This is P-trap. In this P-trap, we see the water seal, then the legs, the uh, leg for uh, incoming uh, water, inlet water and outlet water pipe. So, these legs, legs are nothing but these things, the extension of the pipe after the water seal. So, these legs are again connected with the pipes, inlet pipe and outlet pipe. Okay. So, P, P trap is nothing but when the legs are at right angle. So, you see this right angle, legs are at right angle, that is pin P trap, Q trap. In this, when the legs are at, at an angle, so when it forms at an angle and type creates Q form, so that is Q trap. S trap is nothing but when the shape of the trap is in the shape of S. So P trap, Q trap, S trap based on the shape. This is chosen based on the requirement on the site. And we have a flow trap or Nahni trap also which is called as Nahni trap. So, this is based on the function, classification based on the function. Flow trap is also called as Nani trap. In Hindi, Nani is a Hindi word which means washing or bathing place. So, the trap which is used to remove the water from the bathing area or washing area is called Nani trap or flow trap. So, this is, uh, this also should, all the traps basically should have water seals and the legs and the clean out pipes, clean out I. So, uh, minimum 50 mm depth of water seal is required for uh, uh, flow trap. This is uh, waste water fitting and uh, waste water is, uh, whether wa waste water is flowing or not, flow trap prevents the foul gases bad smell to enter into the building. So, the uh, logic applies same for all types of traps whether it is functional or uh, shaped based traps. We need to have uh, water seal, legs, clean out eye. Okay. So, flow trap is something that which we can have uh, like P, P trap. This is what we see is uh, P trap, but uh, it will have a cover with grating. This is a cover with grating, floor, flow trap with cover with grating. So, this is the water seal, water seal you see, now here the water seal is very less, that is from top, top level of the water till the dip, so here the water seal is very less. So, it depends how you choose the trap also for the building, ok. So, flow trap is nothing but it can be used in bathrooms, kitchens, wherever we see this trap with the fenestrations and holes that is flow trap which you see here they will have a covered grating or a, a covered seal with holes then you have these two uh, connections which goes into the pipe it can be like this like this with but it will have a lid over it material can be pvc ci then this flow trap total depth varies from 120 to 100 to 125. The total depth of this trap can be 100 to 125. So that you can insert that in the sunken slab or even if you want to make the floor raised, it can be easily accommodated. On the upper floors if it is used, as I said, you will have to have sunken or 
raised. So the sunken or raised floor will be raised by 150 by 200 or sunken. Flooring should always slope towards the trap. Wherever the trap floor trap is there, the whole area floor has to be sloped towards that. Outlet of Nani trap is always towards the waste water waste water. This is not connected, flow trap is uh, not connected to the soil, soil pipes. This is always waste water pipes. Soil pipes is only for closets and urinals. Then we have gully trap. Gully trap is provided outside the building, just after the building. Uh, flow traps and uh, flow trap is inside the building, gully trap is outside the building just immediately after the building. So this is like a chamber, gully trap chamber. You see, uh, here you see a P-shaped trap used. The function of this whole gully trap is to collect the waste water from the kitchen sink, wash basins, bathing area and washing area. So this gully trap connects the, collects the water from kitchen, sink, wash basin, bathing area and washing area. This also minimum depth of water seal, minimum depth of water seal which we will have here is 50 mm. 50 mm is something which we need to have here and uh, it also prevents entry of bugs and insects from sewer line to the wastewater line. So, if, if, if my building is here, building edge is here, all the wastewater pipes is connected to this gully trap and taken towards the sewer line and from sewer line it is uh, taken away, right. This can also, uh, uh, this leads to the sewage to inspection chambers and manholes and Sievers. This can also be called as inspection chambers where the sewage is taken outside this gully chamber towards manhole. The total depth of gully trap shall not be less than 30 mm. The total depth should not be less than 30 mm. This should be minimum 30 mm. Depth of water shall not be less than 15 centimeter. Minimum water seal is 50 mm. This I already discussed that water seal, sorry, here, till here water seal should be 50 mm. From here to here. From the top level of the water till the dip. Each gully trap shall have one cast iron grating 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter. This grating which we see, this is a grating which is 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter above the water seal. This whole chamber should be of size 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter. This whole size, like if we draw it in plan, this is 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter which we also see in the previous slide, 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter. For this gully trap, we can have number of 3 to 4 number of pipes connected and discharge the waste water to the gully trap. From the building, 3 to 4 uh, waste water pipes can connect to this and can be discharged to the sewer line. Then we have intercepting trap. Intercepting trap is at the edge of the site just before the manhole. Now we know that uh, we uh, usually the drainage is uh, connected to the manhole, manhole which is located on the streets outside the building so that it drains out, right. Just before that manhole you insert this intercepting chamber. 
it, it is also known as interceptor or disconnecting trap. So, intercepting chamber is usually in this shape. So, here you will have uh, one pipe connecting to the main sieve,r another pipe connecting to the from the house drainage. Then there is a cleaning eye. Cleaning eye is nothing but to clean this. It is always towards the outlet of sea, uh, street sieve,r so we can uh, it can be a stick can be inserted to clean or push the drainage from here you open the cover the usually the chamber is always built for this trap intercepting chamber trap intercepting trap so the cover is removed and the stick can be inserted from the cleaning eye rod which is called as rodding arm and the drainage can be pushed clean okay so uh, this is the usual way of doing intercepting chamber it can also be done in this manner that is you can have two chambers at the edge one is house drain another one is half half uh, cha half channel so from the house all the soil soil waste is come uh, uh, is let into the house drain with the intercepting chamber located at the end of the chamber okay from the house these pipes are connected to this chamber and it is flowed, allowed to flow towards the sewer. You can have house drain chamber separately and half channel separately so that only the intercepting chamber is located in the half channel. In the house drain you can even allow the soil water pipe coming and uh, storing here. So two functions can also happen here. Always it is, uh, you should remember that there should be a vent for all these chambers. So, intercepting chamber, in this chamber the water seal is more, minimum 60 to 65 mm water seal is required in this chamber. The primary function of the water seal is same, all the traps are same, mostly to prevent the movement of foul gases and air from public or common sewer to household sewer. Therefore, this trap is always fixed at the outlet point that is at the edge of the building. This can be of cast iron glazed stoneware pipe. It should be easy to clean also. So, the material has to be chosen perfectly. Cast iron or glazed stoneware. This is also called as last inspection chamber. Last inspection chamber which is provided with the vent pipe. Then we have grease trap. Grease trap is uh, nothing but to remove the grease or oily material from the drain uh, waste water. So, to remove oily waste from waste water. So, oily waste can be accumulated mostly in the kitchens. So, it is usually used in large hotels, restaurants, industries also oily waste can be generated. So, it is used in these points only. Uh, most of the times we also see at our houses that uh, these grease traps are just next to the kitchen towards the outside of the building. Okay. So, these grease traps, what does it do? Yeah. These grease traps can be done in many ways. Now, inlet pipe, say for example, we have a kitchen water coming, from the kitchen sink water, we have the water coming and it flows in one tank, it fills into the one tank. So, at this tank, what happens? Silting happens, that means sedimentation happens. All the sludge, hard material is stored at the bottom and the oil is floating on the top of the water. Once the oil is floating and this uh, soil, uh, solid material is settled at bottom, water is in between. So, this water is pulled outside to the other tank so that again the cleaning of the oil can happen. 
whatever the oil is remained in this, uh, this particular water will be settled here. Here also same process happens but the amount of storage will be lesser than this because here is the first chamber and second chamber. So again to clean further the second chamber is created. So two chambers can be created with permanent uh, wall or uh, concrete structures. So that is one way. The other way is you can even have a same tank, one tank for collecting the grease and the fat or oil and solid matter below. So here what happens, we just introduce a baffle, baffle in between, that is it. It is not a wall, uh, it's not a wall con constructed from bottom to the top, it is a baffle floating baffle which is ins inserted in the whole tank. The process is same, the oil and grease connects, uh, con will be floating on top and solid matters on the bottom. So eventually we, uh, we need to clean this or remove these fats and oils from the water and this sludge has to be removed from the tank so that this is maintained well. So why do we do this, why this process is happening is because when the water is containing this oil content in it, waste water contains oil content in it, the pipe when we discharge it directly to the outside towards the sewer, this inner surface of the pipe will thicken that means it will have a score on it the oil and grease deposits on the inner surface, then it becomes difficult for a easy flow. So that is why the oil and the sludge has to be removed prior to the sewer outlet. So this is the process of how it can be done. First chamber, second chamber it can be settled on bottom, by the time it comes to the second chamber it can be cleaned properly and these baffles can be added in between based on the size of the uh, tank and the size of the tank is dep uh, dependent on the quantity of discharge of this kitchen water. Maybe in small houses we can have uh, small chambers but in hotels, large hotels and all you will have a bigger chamber to clean it out. So these baffles you can utilize, you can add more, if, uh, if not a permanent construction like this, we can add uh, baffles like this, floating baffles like this, so that it sieves the oil content. Then we have uh, bottle traps, bottle traps are uh, used uh, very less, the reason being you see in this picture this is a bottle trap, mostly from, for wash basin is what you use this uh, bottle trap but it is also preferred lesser because uh, uh, only for wash basin we can use that. It is easy to maintain, easy to connect provided below wash basin drinking water fountain or cold water dispensers, mostly for wash basin and drinking water is what you use this. In bottle trap, the discharging of wastewater is not quick as compared to other types of trap. That is the reason you use this only for wash basin and drinking water. Here also we have this water seal like this and this can be re uh, removed and cleaned. This bottle trap can be removed and cleaned. So, you see this uh, different shaped traps which is used for fixtures. Now we spoke about floor trap or nahani trap, we spoke, up, spoke about intercepting uh, traps, gully traps. Now when it is used in the fixture, how different shaped traps can be used. Now you see here this is Q trap. S trap, P trap. So these are the traps which is used S trap and P trap. 
in the fixture you can even see it uh, which is available in the image you get the uh, fixture ready made with the traps inside that you can choose based on your requirement whether the trap should be connected to the wall or to the floor the drain should happen through the floor or through the wall based on that you can choose the type of the fixture so basically these type of traps where they are used generally bottle trap only in wash basin nahani trap or flow trap is used in bathrooms toilets urinals below sink below the sink uh, washing areas utility area gully trap is used for kitchen washing areas wastewater discharging chambers not used for uh, toilets intercepting tra traps these are the last chamber of household sewer systems grease trap kitchen wash area canteens hotels hostels silt trap can be used in courtyards when we have open courtyards in a building we can use open to sky pavements wash areas silt traps can be used now if this is the site and if this is the building and here here is a road okay and there is a manhole here say for example i have a toilet here bathing bathing area here and kitchen here this is just a schematic diagram so all the traps now i have a wash basin here below this i have a trap floor trap is adapted here and i have a wash basin here below this i have a trap again for this toilet there is one floor trap and a uh, trap which is attached with the commode okay so now here i can have gully trap gully traps just immediate to the bathing area and uh, outside kitchen i can have uh, intercepting uh, sorry uh, grease trap grease trap gully trap then this pipes can be connected outside the building where at this edge we can have intercepting trap this is this can also be inspection chamber but intercepting trap is used at this point be just before manhole just before manhole connecting to the manhole we will have intercepting trap gully trap outside the kitchen grease trap inside below the wash basins and fixtures we'll have all the other traps as mentioned below yeah so this is about uh, kitchen yeah so uh, we shall continue the rest of the topic in the next week uh, next class next session of module 3 thank you